हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू हैव वॉच द प्रीवियस पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर फोर दिस इज द पार्ट टू ऑफ द चैप्टर फोर बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द पार्ट टू आई वुड लाइक टू क्विकली रिवाइज वॉट वी हैव स्टडीड इन द पार्ट वन सो वी हैव स्टार्ट विद द ग्रुपिंग और अरेंजमेंट ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट बेस्ड ऑन देयर मटेरियल्स बेस्ड ऑन देयर शेप्स बेस्ड ऑन देयर कलर्स ओके After that, we have seen how to arrange or sort a material or object based on their property. In which we have studied first two properties. Number one is appearance. How particular object or material looks. Some of them are smooth. Some of them are rough. Some of them are dull. Some of them are shiny. Okay. After that, we have seen. hardness of a material or object in which we have studied about hard material and soft material some of them are easy to compress some of them are easy to compress and some of them are hard to compress or press or hard to scratch or easy to scratch the material which are easy to scratch and press are soft material or object and the material which are hard to compress or press and scratch this materials are hard material this all thing we have studied in the part 1 so let's start with the part 2 let's start with the next property that is soluble and insoluble let's study this property with the help of example if i take a glass of particular water and i put pinch of salt a pinch of salt in it if i put pinch of salt in it and stir for 1 minute if i put a pinch of salt in a water and i stir for at least 1 minute then after 1 minute this particular salt dissolved in this water or disappear in this water okay let's see if i stir this particular water with salt for a few minute or a few second as you can see this particular salt in this water is disappeared or dissolved in it so this kind of substance which dissolve or disappear in a water such a substance are known as soluble in water okay let's take another example if i put a stone as you can see white stone in a glass of water if i put a stone in a glass of water and if i stir this water at least for half an hour or hour still this stone does not disappear or dissolve in a water so some substance do not dissolve or disappear even after we stir for a few minutes such a substance are known as or such a substance are insoluble in water okay so let's revise it what is soluble some substance which disappear or dissolve in water this substance are soluble in water and there are some substance which do not dissolve or disappear even after we stir for a few minute then this substance are insoluble in water okay the substance which are easily dissolve in water are soluble and the substance which do not dissolve in water are insoluble as we have taken an example of salt and stone we similarly dissolve any liquid in a water okay some liquids are soluble in water that means some of this liquid easily disappear or dissolve in a water so such a liquid are soluble in water and similarly as we have seen stone does not dissolve or disappear in water in a same way there are some liquid which do not get dissolved in particular water like oil if you put a spoon of oil in a water you can easily see two layers oil is floating on a particular water so some of the liquids are soluble in water and some of the liquids are insoluble in water in a same way almost all the gases are soluble in water especially oxygen okay oxygen play important role in the survival of water animal and water plants okay 
as we required oxygen for our survival similarly water animal and water plant also required oxygen for their survival okay from where they get that oxygen because the oxygen is soluble in water so from water they get particular oxygen which is necessary for their survival and they are getting that oxygen from water so since oxygen is soluble in water that water animals and water plants are able to use that oxygen from water okay so oxygen play a very important role in the survival of water animal and water plant i hope you are clear with this particular property of soluble and insoluble substances okay the next property is object may float or sink okay so let's take another example if i put a stone if i put this stone in this water this particular stone get sink in this water but if i take this particular button of plastic and if i put in this water as you can see that particular button is floating let's take another example if i put this metal tool in this particular water this metal tool also get sink but if i put this particular bottle cap as you can see this particular bottle cap float on the water so in this way there are some object or material which float on the water and there are some material and object which got sink okay i hope you are clear with this property also and we have now come to the last property of this chapter that is transparency this is the most simplest and interesting property so the next and the last property of the chapter is transparency in this particular property we are going to learn about three concept the first one is transparent material the second one is opaque material and the third one is translucent material okay this three terms or three concepts are important regarding this particular property so let's study each and every concept with the help of example if i take this plastic sheet so you can easily see my face through this particular plastic sheet okay so there are some material through which we can easily see objects so such a material are known as transparent materials a materials through which things can be seen easily or clearly the materials through which the things can be seen easily and clearly such a materials are known as transparent material and if you can take a example of this water or this glass from this glass or this water you can easily see my face or my eyes so this water is transparent in nature okay any material from or through which we can easily see things if i take a example of glasses our specs or sunglasses okay so if we take example of those glasses those specs so from that specs or sunglasses we can clearly or easily see the things so such materials are known as transparent material example are glass water air okay the there is a air between my face and the camera so we can easily see my face through the air so these are the example of transparent material now there are some objects through which we cannot see anything okay let's take example of this paper if i take this paper is my face is visible no my face is not visible if i take example of this plate does my face is visible no my face is not visible so there are some material through which you are not able to see anything so such a material are known as 
opaque materials the example of opaque materials are wood cardboard metal okay so these are the example of opaque material now the last term is translucent so what is translucent there are some material through which we can see the things but not clearly let's take a example i have this file okay you can see my face you can see my face you can see my face but not clearly you can see my face but not clearly so there are some materials through which we can see the things but not clearly such a materials are translucent okay let's take another example if i put a finger on a torch so can you say this particular finger is opaque transparent or translucent it is translucent okay why because we can see the light but not clearly okay so there are some material through which we can see the things but not clearly so such a material are known as translucent okay so we can group a material as opaque materials transparent materials and translucent material okay so in this chapter we have learned materials appear differently okay they can mix with the water they can float or sink in a water okay there are some transparent and there are some opaque material material can be grouped on the basis of similarities and their differences okay material can be grouped on the basis of their similarities and their difference in the properties okay so why this grouping is required can you say why we need to group or arrange material if we visit any grocery shop or a general store we can see that they have arranged materials or object in a group uh nuts and granules are differently arranged soap are differently arranged then chocolates are differently arranged so why this grouping or arrangement is needed we arrange this material or object for our convenience so we can easily locate them in our home also we store clothes in our cupboard okay then we put our books in different cupboard okay so we can easily locate different objects so that's why grouping is required there is one more reason why grouping is very much needed what is that if we group materials then we can easily study their properties okay there is a reason why we find this grouping very useful what is that dividing materials in groups makes it convenient to study their properties okay so if we divide this materials in particular groups we can easily study that properties and if there is any pattern in their property or not if there are some similarities between them or not if there are difference in them or not so we can easily study that there are some more an advanced chapter based on this in your coming standard okay so in the higher standard or higher classes we studied this particular grouping or sorting of materials in detail so with this we have completed our fourth chapter i hope you have learned all the concept clearly if any one of you have any doubts till now or any sentence or any word you are not able to understand please comment down below so we can solve your doubt okay thank you